Yo, what's going on everybody? Thank you all for tuning in. My name is Cody Vondell and today we're gonna break down my process creating Metro Grunge motion graphics. To do this, we're gonna use some vector shapes from my recent Metro Grunge Volume 2 kit. You can find it over on my Etsy. We're going to set it up in Photoshop and execute the animation in After Effects. Before we get started, let's check out some examples of this style, starting with the visuals that I created for last summer's Metro Breaks audio sample kit that I released. And guys, I just released my very first Metro Grunge motion graphics After Effects kit. This features some of the stuff that we're going to be covering today. It's already keyframed and ready to drop into your composition. You can find it over on my Etsy and my Patreon. If you want to hop over on my Patreon right now, you can find the Photoshop document we're going to be using totally free so you can follow along with me. So now that we know the style that we're going for, hop on screen with me and let's break it all down step by step. All right, guys, let's go ahead and import our footage. We want to make sure that we are using editable layer styles. We don't want to merge our layers. Um, once we have those imported, let's open up the composition, check out the composition settings. 1920 by 1080, frame rate of 30, duration of eight seconds. That should be everything we need to move forward. All right, next up, we're gonna be looking at radials. So to create these, pretty much we already have them all set up. They're multiple layers. We wanna drop a keyframe um, and it'll automatically drop a keyframe when we change sizes. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and make sure that it's at zero when we start. We're gonna move forward a few uh, keyframes, drop another one, bring it up to about 110 and move forward just a few more keyframes and drop it down to about 100. That's what's gonna give us the bounce in kind of feel. I like to kind of have them uh, all pop in the same way. And then I like to sort of create steps out of my layers so that they pop in at separate times. So you can see right there, it, like they don't look bad when they're all coming in at the same time, but having them pop in one, two, three, four, five, six, that's gonna look a whole lot cooler. So that's pretty much what we're gonna do just by kind of stacking them like steps as opposed to having them all start at the same time. So that should be everything we need for our radials. And keep in mind the way that we're kind of copying and keep uh, copying our keyframes off these layers and dropping on the other layers. We're gonna be doing that with a lot of our stuff um, throughout this tutorial. Next up, our paint splatters. You'll notice that we've locked all of our circles, our radials since they are finished. Make sure that in your columns, you have the track mat visible. Let's go ahead and create a new solid. Another thing you'll notice, I have my handles turned on. Uh, I'm working on a Mac, so that's Command Shift H. That's allowing me to kind of play around with these handles and it's very easy. You can just grab one of the sides. It kind of just all works together very nicely. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate my um, shape here and try to kind of make sure that it covers my paint splatter. Essentially what we're going to do is unmask the paint splatter as the radials are popping up uh, for this animation. We'll kind of see how, how, how the masking thing works. It's something that we're gonna be doing on almost uh, all these layers, doing a whole lot of uh, unmasking stuff. So getting used to working with that, I'd say is a, a big part of what we're doing here. Up next, we're gonna animate the text bar. That is pretty much the container for the text. We've gone ahead and locked all of our other layers. We're gonna create a brand new solid layer and we're going to unmask this text bar using that solid layer. A whole lot of layers that we're using to unmask things. And to do that, we're gonna be using that track mat right there, trying to create a border for our layer that we're trying to unmask. Use keyframes to unmask it over the course of a split second. But as you can see here, just dragging it to the side. And when we play it back, I like to use the easy ease in. Uh, we, we've been using that on a few few of our layers, gonna continue to use it. I think that really just makes everything feel a lot smoother, a lot nicer. Wanna make sure our track mat is turned on right over there. Next up, we are going to be animating the text in front of that text bar. Hey guys, I don't do any type of channel sponsor, so if you wanna support what I'm doing here on my channel, make sure to hop over on my Etsy. That's where you're gonna find all the vector kits that I use on screen, as well as other cool merchandise like stickers, pins, patches, hats, shirts, and more. <laughs> With that being said, let's hop back to the video. In this case, it is my name, Cody Vondell. You can change that out to whatever you'd like, creating once again, a new solid to use as a mask. And I've created it uh, way far down on my timeline. So I need to kind of bring it uh, up a little bit in front of the actual 
uh, name, Cody, right there, so that I can actually reveal stuff. And then we're going to do the same thing with the next layer, Vondel, which in this case called Grunge. I've made the mistake of doing that. So it says Cody Grunge instead of Cody Vondel, but you understand what we're doing there. We're going to create two separate uh, masks for two separate layers and have them kind of slide across it. Similar timing so, so that we kind of get this nice uh, reveal. Uh, the Vondel is going to start just before the Cody ends so that you get this kind of uh, sense of it's a little bit more thought out. So that's what we're going for. And once again, using our uh, easy ease in, I just think that kind of makes things slide in a little bit nicer. So we have one of them set up. I think it's looking good. And we'll just kind of repeat that process for the next. So now that we have the Cody, the Von Dell titles working, everything's kind of animated for those. We're using our, our un unveiling it, we're using our layer mask. We're gonna keep using our solid, solid layers as masks for nearly everything that we're doing on this project. Like I said, it's a whole lot of unmasking. This uh, animation style really relies on that. So um, keeping that in mind, I like to kind of re reveal my stuff with like this 45 degree angle. I think it just looks a little bit nicer. Um, so I want this to kind of slide in the, the Cody, the Von Dell, and then the motion design audio all kind of slides in. So all that's looking good, but I think the next thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna keep the momentum flowing because right now it feels like everything animates and pops in and then stops. And these chevrons, by animating those in, um, we're gonna have it slide in the same way everything else is popping in and getting written across and stuff, but these are gonna continue to slide. So as you can see here, I'm setting up another layer mask using a solid layer. And this time we're just gonna create a little container down here and basically just get it feeling nice and comfy. We're gonna go ahead and slide the chevron in real quick and then continue to have it kind of slide in um, at a slower speed. You know, everything up to this point, near point, and we're, we're moving the mask around. We're keyframing the mask to get out of the way and reveal the layers. In this case, the mask is staying uh, static and we're going to animate the um, layer itself. So it's gonna slide in real fast using that mask. So you only see part um, is, is masked right there of, of the chevrons. And once they slide in real fast, we'll have them just keep on sliding. And I think that should make, make things feel like there's momentum going. Like, you know, everything kind of pops in, but still moving. We still got some stuff going on. All right, next up, we've got our half tones. So uh, let's go ahead and kind of consider what we're gonna do with those. I think we're gonna make them rotate and we're gonna have them kind of pop in. And so we know we want the rotation going on. We don't want it to rotate too fast. So I think about a 90 degree rotation over the course of like the full eight seconds, that, that feels like a nice kind of slower rotation, not nothing too fast. It'd be the same thing that we did with the circles where it starts at zero, goes up to maybe 110 and then back down to 100. So we kind of get that pop in, kind of feel like it pops in. It's a little bit bigger and then it goes to its actual size. And I think with the rotation, that's going to be exactly what we want. And then we're pretty much going to copy and paste those keyframes from one of the half tones onto the other and we should be good to go. So we've got quite a few moving parts at this point. We're pretty much getting used to using masks to unveil layers. Um, we saw on our last little thing where we can use the mask to pretty much stay static and we can move a layer behind it like we did with the chevrons. But now we're going back to using the masks to kind of move them around to unveil layers behind them. So in this instance, so we're going to create two separate solid layers. We're going to use them as masks for our two little drips right over here. And we're going to create them both separately. You could do this, you know, using, you know, one solid shape you could you could pretty much connect both drips to it but i like to kind of make it feel just a little bit juicier by having two separate things moving at slightly different times so pretty simple what we're going to be doing here animate both of these kind of separately just adding our keyframes making sure that we use our easy ease in um, that's just going to make things feel a little bit smoother and we're just going to have them kind of drip down at a slightly different pace and just to kind of give it a little bit more depth so that looks like one down and we can go ahead and get the other one and just kind of seeing them both kind of slide down right there at the same time looks pretty nice.
All right, guys, next up is our sunburst. That's a really basic little shape that we have right back there in the background. We wanna make sure that um, the, the point that we're gonna be rotating is like directly in the middle of the sun. And then all we have to do is just go ahead and start, um, you know, dropping some keyframes down there on the rotation. I like it to pop in real fast, like, like really kind of rotate in real quickly and then continue rotating really slowly. Similar to how we did with the chevrons, how they slide in real fast and then continue to slide in at a slower rate. We're doing the same thing with the halftone pattern. It's gonna pop in rotating real fast, but then continue to rotate a little bit slower. Use our easy ease tool and things should be looking pretty good. Hey guys, I also create all of the background music that you hear in my videos. So if you like it, just search Cody Vondell on your preferred streaming service. And you can also find my music on SoundCloud or Bandcamp, where I have royalty-free audio sample packs that you can use in your own original music. With that being said, back to the video. All right, up next, we are looking at our florals. So as you can see, we have three of them. Pretty much we're gonna be doing what we've been doing all along, uh, creating solids uh, to use as layer masks. Um, we're gonna be kind of doing all of these sort of in a similar way and then kind of creating like step patterns the same way we did with our circles. So they kind of all slide out slightly, you know, one after another. So let's go ahead and get one of them done. And I think once one's done, you'll be able to continue doing the rest of them. Pretty easy stuff. Uh, once again, just mentioning that when, when I create that new solid, I like to kind of rotate it in a way that makes the most sense for my reveal. Text, I like to have it at a 45 degree angle. Something like these florals, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, an exact angle, but something that's gonna kind of feel right with the way that they're being revealed. Next one is a very simple, but very effective tool. Um, writing expressions in After Effects can get a little bit advanced. It's like writing code. Uh, it's not my favorite thing to do, but uh, one expression that I use pretty frequently in this style is wiggle. Make sure you're using position, uh, go to edit expression, wiggle, type it out. It'll know what you're going for. I like mine to be sort of subtle. I would consider three, five, pretty subtle. You can bump it up. Uh, the three, I think moves it horizontally. The five is vertically. It might be vice versa, I can't remember. And then once you've done that, you can just open up the position on all your different layers that you wanna add wiggle to. You don't wanna add it on all of them, but quite a few of them you wanna add it to. You can go to edit expression, paste it right in there. Very simple. Just make sure you're always doing it on the position. That way it understands that you're wiggling around the position. You don't wanna wiggle around opacity or, or uh, the size or anything like that. And as you can see, I'm just kind of selecting the particular pieces that I want to add that wiggle expression to. You don't want to add it to everything because if you add to everything, then it feels like a, everything's moving. You want certain things like I think my floral patterns, I want to keep still my drip paint. I want that to stand still. Um, but as far as like the radials go, the half tones, maybe the title itself, I'd like those to kind of have a little bit of wiggle. The sunburst, I'm gonna let that kind of stand stand on its own. The chevrons, I don't really want those wiggling around. So just be selective and understand that some things wiggling, some things not kind of create that um, balance that we're looking for.
All right, guys. Um, now that we've written that wiggle expression, we've pretty much animated everything that we need to. Um, in this next step, the posterized timing is going to work best um, with some pre comp. So let's go ahead and get all of our titles into their own composition, pre comping, naming it titles. We're going to do the same with all the different categories of things that we've created so far. So let's get all of our circles, our radials into one pre comp. Going to do the same with our paint splatter, our floral vines. And once we have all the different pre comps on our timeline, it's going to be pretty simple to add that posterized timing effect and combined uh, the wiggle expression with posterized timing really sells that 2000s kind of uh, lower frame rate, subtle, chaotic kind of movement going on. Very, very effective uh, combination of an expression and a uh, effect. All right, so I'd say that we have all of our pre comps looking good. We can go ahead and add our posterized timing. And you're going to want to kind of slow down your timing to maybe somewhere between 8 to 12, I think, is going to work best. 8 frames per second to 12 frames per second. That seems seems to be roughly what we were looking at in the 2000s, something like that. So at this point, we've pretty much created all the different parts that we want. The posterized timing is, is sort of icing on the cake, and so is this next step that we're doing pre comped all of those little pre comps together and called that our title animation. And now that we've done that, we can kind of rename what, what we're in right now, export. Um, and this is what we're going to be exporting. Let's go ahead and over here in the effects and presets, check out retro dithering. This is a plugin that I bought online, um, but it is absolutely worth checking out and purchasing because you can pretty much make anything feel like a vintage retro video game. So just playing around with some of our downscaling palettes, different things like that. We're going to be able to kind of, you know, evoke that kind of lo-fi feeling really sells the vintage kind of feel the retro feel of you know 2000s internet video um, so that's kind of what we're going for here so let's go ahead and let it play out um, one thing you got to think about uh, the retro dithering is very taxing on your computer so it'll probably take a while to run through the whole uh, composition and get it all set so just let it do its thing Our very last step, pretty much icing on the cake, very much like retro dithering. But if you take the time to do it, I think it really sells that 2000s energy. So what we've done is we've taken our composition, we scale it up to 200% and we've changed the position so that the sunburst and the radials start in the center of the screen. And then over the course of just two or three frames, starting at about 10 frames into the composition, we change from that blown up 200% centered back to how we started the, the original composition. And just that little bit, I really think sells that, that energy and that sort of uh, punchiness that we're aiming for. All right, guys. So I would say all those different kind of things that we've done, making sure we're utilizing layer masks, our wiggle expression, our uh, posterized timing, the easy ease in, the retro dither, all these different things kind of work together to really sell that 2000s energy. And you'll come to find that these things that we're learning for this particular style can be used to create all types of different styles. So that is my step-by-step -step process, creating this type of motion graphic, the way I've been doing it for all these years. I really hope that this process really helps you turn your ideas into a finished animation. And if you come up with something that you're proud of, we would love to check it out. Over on the server, we have a Discord with tons of talented artists, musicians, everybody showing their works in progress, uh, inspiration, memes, and more. If we haven't seen you over on the server, hope to see you over there soon. A bunch of us currently are working on submissions for our next group compilation, the Vondel 2000 Mixtape Volume 6. We have a street racing theme this time. If you'd like to join the mix or submit your own cover art ideas, make sure to hop on the server and check out the submissions info. Huge shout out to all my patrons for making my videos possible. Thank you guys. Thank you for checking this video out. I hope it helps you out with your design process. Make sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel for more of this type of stuff. I'm looking forward to talking to all of you on my server and I will catch you in my next video. Thank you guys. Bye.